Bruce Lawn. Bruce Lawn. Something most people don't know about me is before I was doing YouTube full time, I was a rapper. And before I was a rapper, I planned on going to the NBA and playing professional basketball. Yes, I thought that I could go and play professional basketball. Now, for some reason, no one ever told me that an Armenian had never made it to the NBA. There, there, there's literally never been an Armenian to the NBA. And if you don't know, I am half Armenian, half Russian. And so that was plan A, going to the NBA. And then I figured, oh man, I, you know, second best thing, become a rapper. Third best thing is do YouTube. And in my mind, I'm still a fantastic basketball player, even though I got cut from my JV basketball team and people are always like oh Michael Jordan got cut from his JV basketball no Michael Jordan got cut from his varsity basketball team I think as a freshman or sophomore and 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 then went came back the next year and crushed it okay so um I am not as good as I think I am at basketball I'm also an only child and I've also struggled with this thing called self-awareness and so I say all that to say this I love playing basketball Matter of fact, I was just hanging out with my buddy, the professor, yesterday at, at, up in his area talking basketball, geeking out over basketball. It is it is one of my hobbies. If you don't have hobbies, I recommend you get some. I, it, it's good for your mental health. It's good for community. It, it, it's good to have a physical outlet like basketball. So I am a, I, I, I love basketball. It's, it's something I look forward to. I play multiple times a week. And this past week, I was playing and my buddy George decided to record a little video of him playing basketball and I and I like I never thought about like recording our our tubing sessions and so I looked at his and I was like huh I look a little odd and then I came back on I think on what is it Friday Wednesday Wednesday and Friday recorded myself and I was like gosh I I got a really ugly game. Like, like I got a really goofy positioning on the court, the way my body moves. It's not very, uh, it's not very aesthetically pleasing. And it's, uh, it's, it's actually, there's, there's parts of it that are dangerous, like dangerous. And so by the way, if you want to see me play basketball, if you want to see me play basketball, go follow my Instagram. I have it pinned up on my profile. It's just called Ugly Basketball. You should be following me on Instagram anyway, but you can go on there and watch me play and explain this in real time. So as I'm playing basketball, I discovered all kinds of things about myself, all right? All kinds, all kinds of things. I discovered that I have duck feet. If you don't know what duck feet are, duck feet is when your feet open up. And what that does is that creates issues. Imagine my elbows or my knees. If your feet open up, you then have issues. This is all a byproduct of having tight hips and, and not having enough glute strength. This is going to make a point in a minute. Just bear with me, okay? So I have duck feet. Uh, and they're not terrible. And, and not that a lot of professional athletes have duck feet, but I have it. I noticed it, and I don't know what, what it's from. And I was like, yo, I looked. Last time I looked at myself playing basketball, it was like when I, when I was – in eighth grade, like the same positioning, same framing, the same little little weird bobble stuff I do. Um, in my mind, in my mind, I think I look like LeBron, you know, because I know I got a little bit of duck feet and LeBron kind of got duck feet. In my mind when I'm driving, I think I look like Kobe. I think I look like LeBron. I think I look like MJ. In reality, I don't. I, I, it looks bad. Like it looks really bad. It looks bad, or at least for me. I, I, I got this hunchover thing I do. My posture's wonky again. Go to my Instagram. You go watch me play basketball. It's, it's, it's not fun to look at. Uh, but in my brain, I'm operating as if I'm this good basketball player uh, to, uh, to the point where last time Professor was here and we did the live stream, if you guys don't know who Professor is, N1 legend, professional basketball player, I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, you know me and you can hoop it up. And I like had the nerve to think that I could like hang with the professor. We haven't played yet, but we've hung out a couple times. And I'm so glad I got this epiphany before that because that, I mean, he's, it's going to be embarrassing when we play, but it's, it would have been even more embarrassing because I would have came in under this delusion that I am actually, like, I actually, I am actually good and I actually look good. Now, um, what, why am I tying this in? Because I was thinking about this idea of 
how we can live our lives through our paradigm and we only see what we see from our point of view. And we don't see the blind spots that are over here. We don't notice how other people may be perceiving us. We don't notice the standards that we are or aren't falling short. And in my specific situation, I didn't notice how tight my hips were. And I've had major knee surgery before. Matter of fact, I had a second knee surgery two years ago. And no doctor or physical therapist ever slowed down to explain to me that, hey, you got some structural hip and knee issues that if you don't correct this, you're going to keep getting knee injuries. You're going to keep getting ankle injuries. You're going to keep jacking yourself up because all I know is what I know. And all you know is what you know. And all you see is how you see the world from your paradigm. Seldom do we actually look at ourselves from outside of ourselves. I'm not sure if this is making sense, but this is why scripture and fellowship and all these things are are so helpful. And I want to point to a passage to you guys real quick. It's in James chapter one. And some of you guys have probably heard this passage, but check this out. This is James chapter one. And it says, reading from the ESV, the elect standard version, it says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to anger, slow to speak, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And then it says, verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror in a mirror for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like but the one who looks at the per- into the perfect law the law of liberty and preserves being no no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts he will be blessed in his doing oh that's good that's good. And let me just break it down to you guys. This, this, this is what this is saying. Listen, the word of God, the law of God, the standards of God, the standards of Jesus, the holiness of God is on such a high level that when we look into, when we look at God's standard, when we look at God's word, when we look at God's, God's, God's law, it, it's a mirror and it reflects how off the mark we are. And it reflects all of the sinful ways that we have inside of us. It reflects all of the structural imbalances we have with the way we move, with the way we run, with the way we do things. And it reveals something that we don't see because all we see is what we're looking at, not, not always having a reflection to get a, a healthy perspective. See, when I was doing music, when I was doing when I was doing hip hop, we would perform, and I didn't want to look goofy in performing. And so, what we would do is we'd go out, rent out dance studios, and I would practice all of my hand movements, my uh, everything, the way my body. I would practice in front of a mirror, like a dance studio mirror. Why? So I knew what I looked like to everybody else. I, I couldn't do that with basketball. There's no big room with a big old basketball mirror in front of it. So I didn't know how mechanically off my movements were. I didn't understand how structurally imbalanced my hips were, that I've been walking with duck feet since I was a kid, that that, that, that I could, in creating more tension on my knees, that the reason why I have a tight IT band is because I have tight hips. All of these things compounded and and I got this revelation of like, holy smokes, I have some structural issues And that video was a mirror for me to accurately gauge where I was. And I have some adjustments to make. I have some, I have some dependency uh, issues in in the way I hunch over in some of the muscle memory, if you will, right? There's some issues there. Um, Hey, by the way, breaking news alert, 53% of the people who watch this YouTube channel aren't subscribed. So why don't you do me a solid and subscribe this to this channel real quick? uh, Because that'll help me out a ton to uh, road to 100K. Anyway, uh, back to the regularly scheduled programming. And so I have some structural issues and in our lives, in our identities, we have some structural issues. We have some sin issues. We have some issues of falling short. We have some issues of being inconsistent, being incongruent, being hypocritical. And when we remove, when we remove ourselves from pressing into the Word of God, when we move ourselves from uh, understanding who we were designed to be and how far short we fall, 
And then we understand how much Jesus has done, how far Jesus has done to get us over that finish line because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of him living the life that we couldn't live, dying the death that we should have died. So now that when we look into this perfect law of liberty, we see how wicked we are when left to our own devices, and then we could place our faith in Jesus. We could place our faith in the one who can transform us from the inside out. And not just that, we can then also press in and get help if we need help, right? Uh, Christians believe in this doctrine. Most Christians believe in this doctrine. It's fairly simple called sola scriptura. A scripture alone is the final authority, okay? It's the final authority. It's a part of the solas, right? Different doc different positional doctrines, meaning that scripture is our final authority. The issue that sometimes we have in Christianity is we think that scripture is the only authority. Scripture is the final authority over our lives. And if we need to do something that isn't in the scripture, like, I don't know, seek therapy, like, I don't know, go get a physical therapist so that my hips could adjust. I don't go to the scriptures for that. I say, hey, scripture is the final authority, but there's other resources available to me to help me press in and become the type of person that God wants me to be. And so the other day I did a video on the whole Atlanta situation and I talked talked about purity culture and I talked about the church not addressing how uh, wild our society has gotten with uh, in, in making kids sit all day, making kids get into hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to go and get degrees in something they don't want to push out being married, to not deal with the anxiety. And I said, these are church issues. These are church issues, and it's not just pray it away. It's not just, hey, you need to, you know, I don't know, go go, go read more Bible verses and memorize them. Yes, we need to memorize the word. Yes, we need to understand how wicked we are. And yes, we do need to understand that the hope and the faith is in Jesus. And yes, we do need to understand that scriptural is final authority. But hey, all truth is God's truth. And if you need help, go get help. That's not the only authority, it's the final authority. And if you're getting help and somebody tells you to do something that contradicts the scriptures, like, I don't know, say you're going to a marriage therapist or a marriage counselor and they're not a Christian one and they tell you, you need to get divorced. You say, well, no, I'm not getting divorced. I'm believing in the scriptures. I'm putting the scriptures over authority on what you say. I'm gonna go get me a different therapist because you don't know what I'm talking, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm putting the scripture as the final authority over my life. Not the only authority, not the only standard. If you need to get heart, heart surgery, you go what? To a heart surgeon. You go get it. You get help from somebody that knows how to do heart surgeries. They do it all the time. This is how I think we need to approach a lot of these issues is, hey, I need to do more yoga stretches. Yeah, I do. And some of you guys are gonna be like, Ruslan, you're doing yoga. Yeah, I'm doing yoga stretches so that I could prevent myself from getting injured so I could loosen up my hips so I don't keep injuring my knees. Some folks are gonna say, oh, you're practicing yoga. No, I'm not worshiping false gods. I'm not praying to gods. I'm not meditating to anything, right? I'm just utilizing the stretches to open up my hips. You see, you see what I'm saying? So like, hey, we can we can receive the common grace because all truth is God's truth. That medical information that that doctor learned, even if he's not a Christian, is still true. Is it not? That information on financial literacy, even if it's coming from a non-Christian, it's still true. Is it not? I know this is I know this is like common sense for some of you, but some of you it's not. Some of you guys are like, oh no, the, the therapist. Uh, what do you say? Right? Like, no, no, no. We need to get help in the areas we need to get help in. So, hey, I hope to hire a coach. I hope to find somebody to help me not look as hideous when I'm playing basketball. Why? Because there's structural issues inside of my hips, inside of the way my back arches, the muscle memory from over the years of having really bad posture. I'm now working on my posture. Why? So that I could remain active and remain playing basketball into my 40s and 50s and 60s, which in my case is an amazing, amazing way to be healthy, to be fit, to, to have that balance of dopamine, to have an outlet, to have community. And a lot of this stuff is also relegated in community. A lot of this stuff is also revealed to us when we're in community. I'm an only child, guys. I do not, I am not the most self-aware person, okay? I'll just, I'll just keep it a buck with you. And there's this passage that I think is way, way more pragmatic. It's, it's way more 
practical than we give it to be, right? And, I, and I'll read it to you guys, right? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, so this is written to the Jewish people who are doing these ceremonial practices and all these things, we're offering sacrifices, right? And he says, hey, we have confidence to enter the holy place. The holy place was in the tabernacle at the time. It was only where the priests can go, the holy of holies. And he's saying, hey, hey, we have confidence to enter the holy place by what? The blood of Jesus, right? And he says, by the new and living way, this is a new and living way. Remember the law reveals our depravity, but Jesus says, hey, I'm going to live the life I could, you couldn't live. I'm going to die to death. You should have died. And now there's a new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain. Now we can go in and experience God through Jesus and go into the Holy of Holies through the curtain. That is what? Through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of our faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And then it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another. To what? Let us consider to stir up one another. To do what? to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Okay, so, so it's just talking about coming together, re, re, reconnecting, right? To do what? To, to encourage one another, to love and to do good works. This is why community is so awesome. This is why you can get around other people. You can seek expertise. You can get insight from other people who may see blind spots and see you differently than how you see yourself. Again, I saw myself in my head as this elite basketball player because I've been playing for a while. And then once I saw video footage, I discovered, holy smokes, I have all kinds of structural issues wrong with the way I actually play. And, and believe it or not, I, I actually, I need some help. I need to readjust some stuff. I need to do some different stretching. I need to work some different muscles. I need, I need to get uh, further along. Why? So that I can continue this good work of fellowship and playing basketball and being physically active. I'm not trying to over-spiritualize a physical thing, but this physical thing, this, this, this physical thing of me exercising basketball actually has a lot of spiritual implications because my body gets an outlet, my mind gets community, and it's actually a very important discipline of mine. I want to keep doing it until I'm 50, until I'm 60, until I'm 70. I'm not going to keep doing it if I don't adjust the structural issues and my balances. So my question to those of you guys that are watching this is... Are you one looking at the word and letting it be, be a true and accurate mirror to you? Are you letting it be a reflection to you? Are you examining who you are in accordance to who God designed you, who you are in accordance with how you fall in short and the work that Jesus has done? That's my first question. And the second question is who in your life, who in your life can help you who in your life can help you see some of those blind spots? Who in your life can press you on to what? Love and good works. Do you have somebody that you can go to? Do you have somebody that you can, you can fellowship with, you can build with, you can, you can confess your sins to? James also tells us, make sure we continue confessing our sins to each other, right? And if you're, and if you're having a need, let the elders pray for you, right? This, this is where the, the beauty of the local church is, is so amazing. And so guys, Learn from my mistakes. Don't be isolated. <laughs> don't be delusional, right? Don't, don't, don't think that you're operating at a level that you're not operating in and you're some, you're some super Christian when the reality is, holy smokes, you got some structural issues. Holy smokes, you got to make some adjustments. You got to fix some things about your posture. You, you, you think you're walking right, but, but, but you, you don't really know because you don't have a mirror. And so when you're walking, you actually have all kinds of postural issues that could potentially cause you pain down the road. And this is when you start getting into stuff like deconstruction because you didn't have the proper structure. Now you got to destructure your faith, right? You start getting into stuff like progressive Christianity and wandering all these different ways. And I'm not saying all progressive Christians do this. I'm saying some do. And so you start going down and asking a ton of questions and deconstructing every bit and overthinking everything. Well, it's because you didn't have the proper alignment. And then you say, well, you know what? Hey, I keep injuring my knee. I've had reconstructive knee surgery. I had it a second time. I have it a third time. Well, you know what? Man, maybe basketball just ain't 
same for me. Maybe this whole thing is just a waste. I don't, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to stop. I'm not even going to play anymore. This is stupid. I know I enjoy it. I know God uses it, but I, I'm just done. I'm done. Right. And, and that's how some of y'all are entering your faith is you're, you've invested in something. You think you've had all the answers. You've operated with a, with a, a degree of, of certainty and confidence and delusion and then you realize down the road that there's, you keep getting injured and you keep falling on your face. And it's really because you haven't spent time to understand the standards of God, how holy he is, how good he is, how sinful we are, how much he's done to put us in a right standing through Jesus, right? And then you haven't taken the time to be in community, to help brothers and sisters show you some of those blind spots, to help press you on to be more loving, more patient, more kind, and to do good works. So those are my thoughts on, on, on this whole thing. Hopefully this, this, this personal story, uh, and I'm sure I'm, I'm going to meet some of you guys. Some of you guys reach out through Instagram. I've hooped with a handful of people and, 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 and it is, it's, it's, it's a funny thing, but this, this is the, the trials and tribulations. If you <laughs> try, I don't even call it that, but these are the things you deal with as an only child who lacks self-awareness in a way. So anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Let me know. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Joshua the King came down and bore it all. Yeah. Conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate on a first name basis.